the Frankfurt Hahn Airport. There's valuable cargo inside this immense Antonov aircraft. 20 GT3 class race cars. Their far off destination, Baku in Azerbaijan. It's the countdown to a spectacular urban auto racing event. Within a major city, a race is taking place, the City Challenge. It's a GT3 class race with world famous drivers featuring famous makes, Mercedes, Porsche, Lamborghini. It's a challenge with many risks and a Herculean task for the organizer Hartmut Bayer. If you organize an event like this, so many unforeseen things can happen, and they do happen. I also think that even if you do this for the hundredth time, something will always happen. We had an incident in Bucharest. The track was hermetically sealed and the racing car started. Suddenly there was a huge dog running around on the racetrack. No one knows where the dog came from. There was no hole in the wall, nothing. But suddenly there was a dog running between the cars. Fortunately, nothing happened to the dog. Somehow he found a hole to slip out. These things just happen. Since then, Hartmut Bayer has always taken care of even the smallest details himself. The City Challenge 2012 is the second racing event to take place inside a large city. Bayer wants to bring motorsport racing directly to the people, close enough to touch. His biggest dream has always been urban racing as part of a large festival. There were a few logistical issues. Materials which should have arrived a long time before suddenly disappeared but were found again. So everything's okay. And at 6 we set off for the parade to the Kempinski Hotel. We're going to have a press conference and the driver's presentation over there and then everything will be perfect. The racetrack is in the heart of Baku's city center. The city has been locked up for days. Everything that you need for a top international event like this is do-it-yourself. Everything's fine with the planning, but as soon as you start to set up, then red lights and flags start flashing and waving everywhere. That's when people realize how gigantic the whole story will be. People don't know that. They just think a little street will be closed off and a few fences will be put up. But then they suddenly find out that it is indeed a huge fortress being built in the middle of the city. There is also a large stage right near the racetrack. Preparations are being made for the cultural program on the eve of the race. Artists and acrobats from around the world have been practicing their part for the big show. Like most of the other performers, this is the Canadian acrobat's first time in Baku. Yeah, it's the first time actually. It's really, uh, really beautiful. Uh, it's an outside show, so we can take advantage of the sun and like you have this beautiful view with all the buildings and stuff. Beautiful city. Baku is a metropolis on the Caspian Sea, the capital of Azerbaijan. The flame towers are Baku's new landmark. The city is somewhere between tradition and modernity. Three and a half thousand years ago, the first peoples settled here. It's one of the cradles of humanity. The Persians and the Ottoman Empire held sway here as well. For more than 70 years, Azerbaijan was also part of the Soviet Union. Today, this country on the Caspian Sea is once again independent, with Baku as its capital. On the outskirts of the city, far from the city center and the racetrack, there's an auto repair shop. These mechanics claim that they can get any car up and running, regardless of the car's make or model. In case of any problems at the City Challenge, we should just send them the cars. They'd love to attend the race on Sunday, but... Yo, 
işlemediğimiz günler olur ki, bazar günü, o vaxtla gelip seyr edilmişik, bakmışız. İş vaxtı belə də, yəni bunu yarım çıxıb gedə bilmədiyimiz üçün getmək. O televizyonda izleyirik, çox maraqla. Preparations are being made for the first showdown. The parade of drivers with their GT race cars will begin shortly. It's an important happening for the organizer and the first test of whether the people of Baku will accept the race. The GT3 class is popular. Their series production vehicles transformed into race cars by the major car makers. Contrary to Formula One cars, a GT3 race car could be driven by anybody who has the necessary finances. Time for the first press conference. Much depends on its success. We have just seen the fascinating sight and, sight and sound of the GT3 cars on the streets. I've been involved in motor racing for 20 years, and this is one of the most fun things I've ever seen. You know, if you initiate, I say it again, this big event, and then you see this uh, cars on the official street with something which is uh, touching really the heart. Hartmut Baya and his team are all relieved. The visitors are enthusiastic. That didn't always go without saying. There's been traffic chaos throughout Baku due to the blocked off streets of the racetrack. It's been a test of patience for the inhabitants of Baku. But there's no limit to the city dwellers' excitement now. The drivers sign autographs well into the night. The acceptance is growing up because to do a race in the city is a lot of voices against you. We close the roads, yeah. traffic problems, and, um, and noise problems, and so on, you know. And that's why if, but if you integrate the whole family, it's more easier. It's also a children's festival. In the kids' area, there are dozens of events to view, marvel at, and participate in. Now the pressure begins for the drivers. The very first training. Jacques Villeneuve, the former Formula One world champion, is definitely the star here. The narrow city course poses a challenge similar to Monaco. I've always loved racing in the streets of a city, close to the walls. Uh, I've always enjoyed that. Uh, we had a lot of that in the States when I was racing in IndyCar, but not, not in F1. So uh, that, that was one of the reasons I wanted to come as well. Villeneuve, like most of the other drivers, is in Baku for the first time, and everyone is impressed. We didn't have much time to see Baku, but I can absolutely confirm that it's a flourishing town. It's a really beautiful city, and what City Challenge organizes here is always well thought out. I did the World Championship this year and the events were okay but not really special and uh, this is looking a lot better with all the stuff around, music. There's one more highlight, the classic Grand Prix Formula One cars. It's a 1989 Lotus 101. Um, it was run in 1989 by, by Satoru Nakajima. Here in Baku, I'm driving a Tyrell 023, built in 1994. The car has a V10 engine with 640 horsepower and is certainly one of the fastest cars. This is the Lotus uh, 102 with the Lamborghini V12. Uh, the original driver was Martin Donnelly. 
world champions. Cars from all the famous racing teams of the last 30 years are here in Baku. Most of the vehicles are now in private hands, but the driver's ambition is strong and the racetrack is a worthy challenge. It's unforgiving. There are no safety zones, just cement walls along the entire course. The drifters are another attraction for the visitors. Their spectacular curve slides provide friction and the necessary grip on the track. And you just hit full throttle, drifting through the turn, just making the back, creating an angle of the car, oversteering it, and then just flooring it through the turn, making as much show as possible, because that's what drifting is about. Baku at sundown. Just two more days until the great race. While the city is settling down, the race planners get into high gear. The tension is growing by the hour. They're working day and night. Did we set up a shuttle for the historical Formula One team so that they can come to the paddock? Is there any possibility, like a minibus? Has anyone thought about it? Because they'll have to walk back and forth from there to here. Hartmut Bayer takes care of everything. He wants to leave none of the important work to chance. So far everything went well. I'm very satisfied. Tonight I'd like to have a little round table with two journalists. Where can we do that? Up in the Hilton, in the round bar. I was in Baku three weeks ago. A race like this needs to be organized. I had been here for a week already. I talked to all kinds of people, from the telecom to the hotel where you can find the press center in order to prepare everything so I know where everything is when it's time to start. There are hot rhythms up on the stage. Thousands of viewers are already coming to see the rehearsals for the big gala on Sunday. There are even huge crowds at the press conference before the race. The country's interest in the event is growing by the day. Journalists from many countries want to take part in this unique event. Preparations are being made for the live broadcast. This team specializes in racing events. They produce the show for Formula One. We're covering the event with 21 large, permanently installed cameras. We also have two wireless cameras in the pit lane, eight onboard cameras, and several small cameras installed on the walls. So in total, we have approximately 35 cameras for the TV coverage. We already came to the city several times to check it out. Then we started the detailed planning, but everything was still on paper. The creative department crew arrived on Friday. All the technicians were already here. There are 30 broadcasting institutions that, of course, broadcast to many countries. In total, the race will be broadcast live in 120 countries. Yes, it's a bit difficult here because most of the workers who are assisting us, for example, the men driving the cherry pickers, they neither speak English nor German. Yesterday I had two interpreters, one translated from English to Russian and the other one from Russian to Azeri. This is very exciting for us, but really not easy.
Five photographers from Germany are documenting the race for the event organizer. My highlights the whole weekend, the city of Baku and the people in Baku. This town is incredible. Enjoy it. The photographers present new photos in the City Challenge Internet Hub almost every hour. The web presence with its up-to-date reports is just as important as the television broadcast. Also hier auf dieser tollen Festplatte sind uh, zwei terabyte uh, Daten an Here on this hard drive we have two terabytes of images from the City Challenge photographers. And this is Chingiz and he's uploading the data to the computer and then to the hard drive. Und geht diese Daten uh, auf den Rechner und dann auf die Festplatte. Also die Fotografen kommen hier mit ihren Karten. The photographers bring me their cards and I save the data on this hard disk. I erase those cards and put the empty cards back. We've already received 20,000 likes today, and you can see huge activity on the Facebook site. Over 17,000 people who are actively talking about the event. This is amazing. Also die meisten Fans kommen aus Aserbaidschan. Most of the fans are from Azerbaijan, are male, between 18 and 34 years old, and actually come from Baku. Kommen tatsächlich auch aus Baku. Die Sprache der Facebook The language of the Facebook users is Russian, followed by Azeri, Turkish and then English. Those are the four languages people speak here. I get the Facebook postings from my colleagues, but they have to be represented in a way that the Azerbaijanis like them. And for that reason, our company needs a native speaker who can translate these contents in the best way. Yesterday I posted a picture on Facebook that the users really appreciated. So far this was the most popular entry on our Facebook page. It's a photoshopped image. In the picture you can see a normal domestic car next to the racing cars. People are incredibly pleased about it. With gestures like this we can show that the people are being treated as individual Azerbaijanis. It's getting serious now at the racetrack. It's warm-up time for the qualifying round the day before the race, and it's the first major spectacle for the viewers. It's also the first major marketing opportunity. Auto racing and show business are inseparable. And it's the final rehearsal for the crew responsible for security at the racetrack. The majority of the on-site crew has experience in Formula One racing. So, of course, we have the ability to ensure safety at an event of this size. The tight city course has many danger zones, and they require the highest concentration. A false step is punished immediately. This street circuit is something quite special. There are no runoff areas because there are concrete walls on the left and right sides. This demands caution. Our car mechanics on the outskirts of Baku say they're also security experts and would like to offer their services at the City Challenge. Everywhere in the city, spectacular events are taking place, 
advertising the race and the big show in the evening. The percussion group from Germany is enthusiastic about the event here in Baku. Yesterday at two o'clock in the morning, we tested the world's best sound system, K1, and we rocked the city with 120 decibels. No one complained. In Germany, this would not be possible. That really rocked. We're having a lot of fun here. It's also fun to drive in a real Formula race car taxi. The day before the race, the organizers of City Challenge offer rides in the race cars right on the original racetrack. Second, passenger seats were fitted in the Porsche and in the Formula car. For sure, preparing a taxi drive means also a lot of adjustment. But the best thing is that the people can feel the pleasure of driving next to a real racing driver. For once in your life, you can feel like a real Formula race car driver. It's simply really great. You get butterflies in your tummy. The celebrities have arrived. After the stress of the previous days, Hartmut Bayer has lost his voice, but is obviously proud. Wilma Ellis. This is Wilma Ellis, a German actress who has achieved unexpected celebrity in Turkey. She plays in a soap opera and 50 million Turks watch it every week. Now Vilma Ellis wants to experience butterflies in her stomach as well. This gentleman is well known, Rick Yoon, the villain from the James Bond film Die Another Day. The talent of this young girl that took me around in the F1 was uh, impressive. 17 years old, she's been doing been doing it since she was four years old, so uh, I'm, I'm glad that she was focused. And everyone in Baku has been patiently waiting for this man, Rafet, the Turkish singer, who is also a superstar here in Azerbaijan. Thousands cheer him on during the big show on the eve of the big race. I wish you luck. All the best for tomorrow. I'll be sitting in the front row and I'll watch the race from very close up. I'm sure my wife and I will have a lot of fun. Hartmut Bayer has realized his dream of organizing a race car event and huge festival in the middle of a major city. It's a family festival, a children's festival. Sunday morning in Baku. The day of the race has finally arrived. The national anthem sounds throughout the entire city. The 
It's the start of the City Challenge 2012 in Baku. The GTs from BMW are the favorites, as well as the Mercedes and Porsche cars. The race will take one hour. A change of drivers. The race is a team effort. Hartmut Bayer watches the race with an old friend, the well-known entertainment chef Hans-Peter Vodatz. He came all the way from Berlin to lend his support. Super, super, I this. Hans-Peter Vodatz is very impressed. I'm indeed one of the few people without a driver's license, but I'm completely fascinated. This is a work of art combining motorsports, entertainment, art, culture and cuisine. Sensational. The victor of the City Challenge in Baku is Steff Dusseldorp from Holland in his McLaren. Yesterday, a dream came true, not just because of the race itself, but because of the time frame in which we managed to organize it. That's admirable in such a short period of time. That's something I've always wanted to achieve. And yesterday, I think we passed with flying colors. Now Hartmut Bayer is dreaming about something new, a city challenge with environmentally friendly electric race cars, piloted by world-class drivers, maybe even right here in Baku?